October Halloween picks. It's one of my favorites because Robert's smart and I'm not. And then... I don't know. This is a little tougher for me. So you you picked the theme of creature feature. So I had to really kind of focus on like what what's a creature? <laughs> yeah, me too. I was like, yeah. is this a creature? I'm like, well, technically yeah, ghosts are creatures, but but I don't so well, we haven't we, done we, this one before. We've done we, thrash uh slasher, thriller, uh classics, but creature features like um I don't know. I feel like it's it's a little different. It's a so, little different. Yeah. Not my not my norm either. Not the well, norm. a little bit, but you know what I mean. So yeah, yeah. Well it's good, it's good stuff. And um what was let's let's kick it off with you. So your first one is I always the first thing I think of, and I've said this before, is the descent. So it is a Scary. true creature film. Uh, so one, I mean, we talked about. I saw this in the theater, and I was just creeped out, and I was the claustrophobic and all the things. And then you add the creatures on top of it. Um, so, yeah. so yeah, that that I, when I think about that, that's always that moves right to the top. And it's scary with, like, just like you said, if it, if it were like above ground caving system, you're like, I just won't go in there. But yeah, the underground thing, take out the take out the monster. It's scary anyway. It's just like you pick the wrong. Yeah spot you're done it's why awful. would they do th- what kind of hobby is that my god <laughs> no thank you but yeah. that is a that is a great choice <laughs> that's a great movie i get creeped out walking into the bronson caves i'm like oh, i don't know <laughs> i heard <laughs> a sound i'm like i'm out of here <laughs> <laughs> oh it's so great um the descent is a good one i picked surprise surprise jaws never which, heard of it tell me more some movie i think it's about a stingray <laughs> or okay you know, I don't. I rarely watch Jaws. Uh, that uh, not during the summertime. I usually kind of watch it every July, and that's that's it. But yeah. it is the true. It is a horror film. It's a true creature feature, and uh, it works on so many levels as we talked before. But you know, it's the first one that came to mind. I was struggling a little bit with this genre, but uh, I picked Jaws. I hear yeah. it's okay. Might well. be a good movie. It kept people out of the water for quite a while. Or did its job? <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, we we were we went to the Jersey Shore all the time, and yeah. that was <laughs> uh, almost I uh, was a four, I think, when it came out. So it was already kind of in the. It's already yeah. out out there in the world, you know. When I've had kind of had remembrance and kind of consciousness. So, uh, but yeah, and it so was so based on like, the Jersey Shore attacks in yeah. 1916. And so there we go. And, and I love that you went there. Yeah, well, there's so many reasons not to go into the ocean and Jersey, but <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. sharks just added to the it. The fear of it is the least of your trouble. But yeah, but, uh, yeah Seaside Heights. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. Which gets called out uh, in Vamp, if you remember. Uh, yes, so do you remember yes the movie Vamp? Yeah, she talks about that. So, But uh, but back to Jaws. Yep, so obviously, um, yes. for obviously this movie's been analyzed to death but like you said it still works and i had saw it on the big screen and i think it kind of works because you know jaws is your uh summer movie and then i think you have jaws 2 as kind of late summer jaws 3 the fall and then christmas of course jaws the revenge so it's a perfect it's a really yeah. is a perfect yeah. timeline <laughs> jaws, jaws the revenge is a christmas movie folks I mean, it is so yeah it is there good go. but that is a great that is a great jaws timeline uh, yeah. So, and for my next pick, and we, I try not to, I was like intentionally try to, because you, you had your list first. I'm like, let me try not to have too many doubles, but we did both agree on the thing. And yes. I should uh, assume this is the John Carpenter's The Thing. Oh, no. And no, not Robert. the, uh, no. What do you, t- I don't know if I saw that one. Yeah. No kidding. It is. All the, it all is. the things are good, but yes. The thing, the, the John Carpenter one is just, so good. And I read it, and you probably knew this, but I did it. I didn't realize it was not as well received mm-hmm. when it first came out. People like didn't like it. Oh no. It, Critics it was hated a, it. Everybody hated it. Uh well not everybody, but um I'm pretty sure it cost John Carpenter. I think it cost him Firestarter because he I think he got detached from that. Um, so I'd be curious what how Firestarter would have looked as a John Carpenter film. It still kind of feels Carpenter-ish to you know when yeah you, it does when you it watch does. it. Um, but and I think it kind of just dismayed him from Hollywood, you know, and probably rightly oh. so. And so yeah. it's great that now it's kind of found its footing. And 
Uh, actually, uh, we had previously talked uh, about the thing expanded is as uh, now you can Ian uh, be a supporter for that. So uh, I had my I'm a supporter. So uh, last week they had their first kind of kickoff, you know, talking about behind the scenes, what what it could look like, what they are. You nice. know, kind of had some Q&A. So so it's interesting and they're ta- it, it's interesting. They're taking a different approach or it's already kind of launching, you know, because for aliens expanded. They got all these things and they worked up and finally got James Cameron and Sigourney Weaver. Uh, this, they almost did the opposite. They started with Carpenter. And then and, they worked and their they're way. they're going to be, you know, working their way through it. So it, it'll be interesting. And and for them, obviously, it's like, we, it's not going to be exactly like Aliens Expanded, but what will this kind of look like? So, and but they, obviously, they, Carpenter's great, but obviously the the get, the get person would be Russell. But <laughs> Yeah, of course. Yeah. And he hasn't signed on or anything. No, but I could see him, you know. He's not really it. doing much. I yeah. mean, and we lost Donald Moffat, I believe. And there's a there's a few that have already been lost. Brimley, uh, yeah. But um, but I think, yeah, I'm 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 looking forward uh, to that one as well. So me too. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And just to recap on the thing, um, nothing that we don't already know, but the effects in that, the practical effects, they're so grotesque and scary. Um when they when they did the thing 2011 um it was originally going to be a remake but the producers you know the writers and whatnot and a rare hollywood move said like the original was perfect let's not touch it and let's do a yeah so yeah thing is a great movie if you haven't seen it go check it out um i'll let you do the your next one i'm sorry since i had the thing as well okay which we Uh, love so it follows. I'm. I'm. I th- kind of think this would be a creature film. I'm not quite sure. Might be a little bit stretched. So, which one is it follows? It's, so you're not familiar with it follows. So it'll be interesting because Nick's listening. I did not like this movie when it uh, uh, first came first came out. So it's with uh, Micah Monroe. Um, it came out in 2014. Oh. So it's kind of the sometimes it's called the STD movie where as they kind of pass it on to one person to another and so forth. So oh, I like those. Yeah, premises so. sometimes you have, you have when not they seen, work. You have not seen It Follows? No, no. Okay. I'm going to add it to well, my list. See, see what you think. It's not, it's kind of a creature. It's not really a creature. It's not creature like a Jaws or an alien or something like that, but um, I included it here. So, oh, I like um, it. yeah, so it had to, it had to wear on me a little bit. So, but, and I'm but, still but super But you li- like it now? Oh, uh, I like it. I don't love it, but. Okay. I went to the locations, if that counts. So it counts. <laughs> yeah, that's counts. commitment, my friend. So, but yeah. So, and what did you have next? I had, had it follows. No, <laughs> uh, I had Alien. Okay, that's a good creature feature. The original, uh, the original, the all the all the movies are applicable to this. Um, but the original focuses on the one xenomorph, and as as you know, uh, it's more. Speaking of claustrophobia, it's kind of the opposite it's just so big and you're exposed and could be hiding anywhere and uh alien is just such a, a terrific thriller um Sigourney weaver was made for that Absolutely. and it was at a time where female leads were not cast a lot as you know the hero well and the action supposed, star yeah it was actually supposed to be not too far from the thing it was supposed to be i think all male and obviously Ripley was actually for sure a male character that they just switched to female, not kind of last minute, I think so. Oh. Um, but, um, and that's why yeah, there is no romanticism going on or, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. There's none. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it works, you know. Cause there's not any females in the thing, right? No, not yeah. in the uh, not 80, 80, 83. Yeah. Uh, uh, 82. I think. 82. 82. Yep. Um, but uh, you are correct. But it works. And so, uh, yeah. yeah, I think it still works. It's great to see on the big screen, especially, or at least in the dark with the, the strobes uh, at the end and the countdown. The countdown is my favorite. I used to yeah. I used to watch Alien so much as a kid. And my still to this day, my favorite sequence is the countdown and the, the alarms going off. Mm-hmm. And there's just arbitrary steam being thrown in like every shot like it what a set you know what like what a set Ridley Scott hats off to you that Napoleon all great films. <laughs> all great <laughs> just the, his top two kind of right <laughs> right there which uh, I, I was no nah, I'm not I, I want this on Ridley Scott but you know this, he was at his peak I mean everything worked out for a number of reasons 
um, between, you know, the, the, the Geiger creature and really Scott and yeah. Sigourney Weaver, like every, all, all the Is stars. Is it HR Geiger? Were, yep. All the yeah. stars were uh, aligned for, uh, for this film to work for 1979. Yeah, Which it was still, there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is great. It is great. Um, next I had Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And I uh I didn't put the year, but I was thinking the 78 one. Perfect. Uh, um, same thing. I was kind of thinking the other day, because like we talk about but the various body snatchers films. Uh, but in 78, there was I just think about the effects were so so good. Good. And they still hold up. And I'm thinking even just the minor effects, like one of the first things you see the, the, I don't know what you even call it on the, on the, the, you know, it falls to earth and it kind of falls on leaves and whatever. And I was oh, like, yeah. I don't even know quite. I mean, it's for 1970, like now it'll just be CG. Well, it has been CGI. I remember the, uh, what's the Nicole kid one? I'm just invasion. Yeah. Um, the invasion. Yeah. Um, next one, what we just called the, <laughs> uh, for, they just keep lopping off. Remember the invasion? Um, how bad it was. I'm not going to get into that, but uh, don't you need my but, number? We'll look it up and find you if we do. Like, <laughs> we got, we got it, we got. It. But you know, they're holding. They're like, oh, it's it's kind of this slimy, almost blobish thing, and you could tell they're it's not there. You know, like it's yeah. CGI, whatever. And it's like in '78, everything was right there, the and All kind tangible. of almost kind of looking like a, a mold growing type thing, but it's moving, and it's like. It works um, so well. Just some even and, uh, in the first scene, creepy looks. You know that oh. he's walking through the park, and there's kids on swings, and the priest is kind of just looking at her. So the uh, the creep factor is just fantastic. It's so creepy, and that shot with the dog hybrid is mm. still the things that it's nightmare fuel to the, this day. It's just so. Even the poster I remember had like the seed roots yeah. things going yeah. under the ground, and it was true seventies art. It was. Yeah, that's a great movie. Do you know I have the photo novel of that? Do you even the know what photo a photo novel? Yeah, do you even know what a photo novel is? Is it <laughs> the movie, the novel with the film pictures? It's all pictures with captions and stuff like that. So how big is it? Like thick wise? Is it... I have it right next door. Do you want me to grab it real oh, quick? Yes. Or do you want to? No, you, go you grab it. I'll keep the listeners and uh, enjoy. You keep it. talking. Keep talking. <laughs> We're talking about invasion of the body snatchers, folks. This was Donald Sutherland's. One of his most prominent roles back in the 70s, uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, came out in 1978. You can actually look at the locations on setchecker.com. Uh, that one is a movie that it was scary for me as a kid, as a teenager, or whenever it was I saw it. it uh, you don't know how many people are infected. You don't know what's happening, and it got you. And Robert is back with a, it's called a photo novel. Uh, yes, so you have I went to grab cool it. Okay, I, find, your I, I could not find the. I just quickly grabbed my Greece photo novel, so this is not it. But so this is what a photo novel looks like. Oh, wow, <laughs> oh, that's so cool! I love the bubbles, like comic book. Yeah, so it's it's actual photos. Look, there's. I love that. Yeah. Uh, for for the entire movie, and this is what photo novels we used to look oh, like. Oh, F O T O N O V E. Yeah, that's so cool. So they used to, uh, yeah, to kind of make these. So pre VHS days, if you wanted to relive the movie, you just read and watch it. So you just read and watch. That's exciting, though. Yeah. And I'm imagine these aren't the same anymore. They don't make them anymore. No, you know, I think they made one for Blair Witch Project. Oh, that's cool. As just kind of a throwback. Um, but oh, and there we go. This is the original. Oh wow! My Rob. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> so. That that's has exciting. not held up very well, but anyway. And you take good care of it. Uh, yeah, photo novels um, down a rabbit hole, which I'm bookmarking for later. There's like a Rocky Two one I'm looking at. Oh, yeah. There's Champ. Mork and Mindy. That's exciting. Oh, yeah. So, welcome to the world of photo novels, people. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so, no, this is great. But that's really cool that you have those. Yep. Yeah, so, somewhere I have the Invasion of the Body Snatchers. But anyway. So what do you have next? I have Creature from the Black Lagoon. Ooh, I have not revisited that in a while. It's been a while. It caused it, it it inspired me to watch The Shape of Water, which I haven't seen. So I I bought that and I enjoyed Shape of Water. That's on later, which you've been watching. But um Creature from the Black Lagoon, I feel like holds up very well. It was early fifties, um I'm sorry, early horror cinema in terms of like it wasn't quite the new Hollywood era yet. And it's they filmed it all in location down in the Amazon yep. and it's uh did they? 
uh, for most of a lot uh, of it was. I'm yeah. sure a lot of it was filmed in L.A. Yeah. Yeah. But I remember, or maybe it was Return of the Creature. One of them, I know they were on location. Um, I'll have to look that up. Don't okay. quote me on that. But the uh, you're quoted now. The whole <laughs> internet's going up in arms. Do you, if you remember the the underwater scenes, you can all picture that she's swimming in the in the river, and he's like barely touching her feet, like something's under there. But to do that kind of cinematography in the fifties, I think is awesome, mm-hmm. and it looks great. And um, yeah, it's a fun movie, and it's it's a classic. So I Creature from the Black Lagoon. If you haven't seen it, I think it's a good creature feature to to bring out. Uh, now you, I, now I forgot. Now there's a whole '50s thing that I'm like open up, and I'm like, oh, I should have added this. I should have added, oh, them. like all the you uh, know, like the big spider movies, yeah. and stuff like that. So that could be its own show it. because that that's would a be its own. That's a fun topic, and I've seen a lot of those guys. Yes, yes, all the uh, way up to ants in 1970, whatever, <laughs> uh, which I I do love, and I know you watch that too. Of course, of course. Um, the next, it's not, it has not held up as well, but. Uh, I put the relic. Yes. Um, so I'm not I sure if you're familiar relic. with that. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, 1997, which yeah. God, that's so long ago. So this and Sizemore. species, not to interrupt you. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. We were, we watched all the time. It was the species. Remember species? Oh yeah. And the relic. And it was like, I think I owned them both on VHS and we like almost wore them out. It was, it was a summer of dreams, Robert. Uh, so, uh, so remember the time it was kind of, I was, I remember kind of being impressed with the movie because I thought oh, it was better than it should have been. Um, and it was still, uh, you know, just a couple years after Jurassic Park. And so we were still figuring out CGI. But um, but yeah, I just kind of I liked it. I like the concept of I don't want to spoil it, you know, what the creature actually is or how it kind of I, I thought it was kind of uh, interesting. And and then I think I can't remember if I read the book before or after. But um, and then they had uh, awesome. relic reliquary. I think was the name of the book sequel. I don't think they ever made it into a a movie. But uh, but yeah. So I thought I thought it was kind of a fun creature movie. I that's I that's a great choice. To... I should have had that on my list. And I love that you have the book to that. I always oh, yes. I love that there's a book. I to used it. to be a big book reader. Uh, Which is great. Like in high school, and then obviously into my twenties, and then I sadly I've just kind of let that. You're twenty, so bit. just like five years ago. Yeah, just exactly. So now that I'm yeah. 32, uh, yeah, 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 everything's fine. Yeah, so <laughs> you could pull it off. Yeah, um, oh, relic, mm. relic is a great choice. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna. I wish I had the relic for mine. Um, my next one, I do not. I have Tremors, which <laughs> is a fun ride. I've seen them all. I know they get very bad. I'll still watch the sequels here and there, but the Tremors is constant. It's, um, it's better than the next movie on my list but it's in the same <laughs> like vein where it's ridiculous but the writers are committed to it and they they get it done so do it's you like tremors are you a fan i am not but mm. i remember i mean it's just the first one is a solid movie and i read them i uh there, there's some musicians that work well to become actors or you know in certain parts so reba mcintyre is like not somebody who's like oh yeah movie stuff you know but yeah uh she she She's just crazy. dives into this role and 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 was it michael gross and of, kevin bacon of course so yeah um but yeah i, I like the concept and it, it was Fred a true Ward. it was a true 50s movie 40 years later um so it was uh it, it's yeah. good in that way but yeah so it's still solid i i remember seeing trimmers too and i think i do not have have not seen anything post after that but yeah you don't need to no okay. there's certainly no reason uh it gets really ridiculous but um reba mcintyre her chemistry with her husband in the movie um i mean it's just right on cue like they're reloading the weapon she throws it to him she catches they're talking she's finishing him off she's got a little bit of sad yeah. like it's just it's a it's a fun movie but um so yeah tremors i i would recommend if you haven't listeners ever seen it just give it a watch it's a solid movie it's 1990 i believe that sounds I sounds all correct. all the facts yeah, yeah, all, the, yes. all the facts that you have is this was this also shot, shot in the amazon for, just, oh yeah right i gotta find that out <laughs> yeah this was shot um shot all uh new york city actually they rented the city and made it a desert set <laughs> it was really weird to, yeah just they really just had to do it so <laughs> Maybe I'm um, thinking of Anaconda, which should be on my list, maybe. but it's not. Oh, no, um, Robert, it was filmed in Florida. 
Gotcha. All in Florida and Universal. Nothing was shot in the Amazon for Creature from the Black Lagoon. Uh, okay. Now we know. Now we know. Thank you. The more you know. The more you know. <laughs> um, what's your next one, sir? Um, let's see. I put Cloverfield. So uh, I've not honestly revisited this very often, but it was... Uh, when, when did this movie come out? Uh, 2008? 2008? Yeah, so... Um, I but think, yeah. I don't know if you remember at the time. So I guess before it came out, uh, was it attached to Transformers or something? It was kind of a mystery trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, and even by in 2008, we you just knew everything that was happening, you know, in the next six to, to 12 months of what movies are coming out, whatever. Yeah. And this trailer just came out of nowhere. And I remember the audience was buzzing. You know, this was like opening night and we're like, what is this? And we I, came, know. I didn't even have a title, I don't think, at that point. I think no. it was just coming or something like that so we didn't even know what it was called cloverfield but um uh but then you know it kind of hit at that right time you know is what 10 years after uh blair witch project or so and so it was still kind of this we were still okay with some of this found footage um yeah kind of so it was good timing yeah um and it was just it was done in such a way it was kind of uh interesting enough they uh on one hand, you might have saw a little too much of the creature. Thing. You know, sometimes it's kind of like Alien is still best just not see as much. But it had Agreed. a lot of, yeah, it kind of, it worked better, let's say, between, what was it, Godzilla 10 years before. Oh, you know, yeah. we're like, we saw it too many, but in, if you were in New York or whatever, and it was going through, but you would only see slivers of it, you know, like, and that's kind of, I kind of liked how they, they kind of did that. So, oh, um, yeah. so, so I put this, maybe not more on current, but more be more on just kind of uh, what memories I have of, of seeing it at the time. So. No, that's a great, that's yeah. a great choice. And I, I've only visited it, I think twice, once theatrically when it first came out and then like maybe a few years later, but yeah, those, those memories, I remember the one where they're on the, I think it was the Brooklyn bridge or Manhattan bridge and everything's going crazy and they, they pan over and there's a helicopter Search, search in the Statue of Liberty with a spot spotlight or whatever, and you can see like the heads removed and everything, and it just it looked real right. and it was like just a nice touch. Um, but I agree with you on less is more with the monster. But let me ask you this about Cloverfield. There's this theory where at the end you can see the asteroid fall into the ocean mm. when they're at Coney Island before yeah. everything takes place. To this day, I still can't see that. And I like YouTubed it. I did close ups, and there's videos of here's it is, and you can like barely see it. Is there is there any credibility to that, or is that I don't know. Nonsense? It could be one of those Wizard of Oz urban legend things. Maybe I don't know. I, I think like, I think it might be. Yeah, where we were seeing things that aren't actually there, and and I wouldn't be surprised where the J.J. Abrams like, yeah, just let that happen. Let J.J. Abrams let, let is those letting things it roll. happen. So, um, let people oh, yeah. pretend uh, that <laughs> yeah, because this is what you know post lost and you know like where all these little nuggets of stuff just kind of to build up to the hype of a movie so it was good pr yeah at the time yeah good call and the marketing yeah. worked it i remember the poster said something had found us and it was like put online a lot and it was before like wikipedia and a lot of stuff was mm-hmm. really there like you didn't i mean it was you know what it was it was an upcoming yeah. movie it was an imdb but they did a really good job with some of the viral marketing stuff yeah work good good for them good for them good choice um i have i'll knock this off my what you've been watching because it's on there too and that's killer clowns from outer space you have to say it like what's it killer clowns from killer outer clowns. space i don't that's the way i always say killer clowns from outer space uh this is the police officer or whatever says that in the movie so who mooney i think that's yeah so yeah. i haven't watched it in a while but yeah mooney he's such a bad cop but he's he's not he just yeah. like he's by the book, takes things hard ass, probably not a nice guy. Um, but he wants to do things by the book, but he refuses to believe the clowns are there <laughs> until it's too late. Um, you know what? This movie has good effects for lower budget. Uh, yeah. It's a great B movie. It's got I mean, it's ridiculous. But the writers, the I forget the name, the brothers There's like three of them that produced yep. it and wrote it. The Chiato brothers, I think. Chiato brothers. Yeah. They they own it. And um it's just fun. The the final boss and all the little <laughs> gimmicks. My only problem, Robert, is the police. Mm. There's only two cops uh, in that town? Come well, on. Well, it's kind of a... It's supposed but, to be a tiny town, but... But they have a public transportation, and there's well, like motorcycle Well, Haddonfield at least had six times as many that's cops as they did, so... No. It's Maybe... Fair. 
there was a convention and they were at or could you be know, like police <laughs> academy well the chief they all was out they did say the okay chief was see out so maybe they're all down in miami celebrating uh commandant lassard's uh <laughs> honor that he was getting at the time <laughs> he so was getting what it. i'm thinking so but it's, uh, yeah it's a fun yeah movie. sometime we'll have to coordinate to see because we'll go down to sean clark's place and see all the killer clown i would love that matt stuff that he has yeah i would love that it's 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 fun and you've you've covered that we've talked about that on the show uh you did a great job and crescent cove is mm. uh, in the in the film it was shot in watsonville I think so. There's a couple of different names uh, near there, Santa Cruz and a couple other places. But yeah, I think Watsonville was the main, main spot. So. Okay. And, and if be, I, if before I we move on, yes. I just want to say killer clowns was one of those movies I saw like as a kid when it was replaying on TV. And I never thought like anybody really knew about it. Cause I thought it was just one of those bad movies. And then as I got older, more and more people I talked to were like, Oh, it's a great movie. And, then like the internet was born and you're like oh it's a that's a cult classic like mm -hmm. people love this movie and um do you do you visit it revisit it a lot i or... do not um which yeah. i probably should i remember at the time especially when you know i'm getting ready to locations i definitely well, i had to watch it you know or kind of go over it a couple times to kind of hit all the spots so but yeah at the time it still worked and um and now you know it's it's in spirit halloween it's like you know it it's it's weird that these I mean, I think back to the time, like uh, during the early Friday 13th, you could get a poster or a press kit or, you know, there, there you couldn't buy anything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there was no nothing, no marketing uh, yeah. props to get or whatever merchandise. It, I mean, yeah. And now it's strange that this is, yeah, you, know, you know, Walmart, you can and Amazing. get these shirts and whatever. And so I was like, I just could strange to me yeah. it's like they say in v for vendetta here's a country that has everything literally everything america <laughs> you can get anything anything that yeah. we, we imagine having this as a kid like yeah we had playing cards for some some movies <laughs> i we, think we had a, we had a, Tracy card we had a read movies <laughs> with <laughs> photos photo novel yeah we couldn't just yeah <laughs> but it's it's fun killer clowns check out yeah. robert's website too for the killer clowns entry it's it's great uh so next i put the gate so nice. which we've talked about uh 1987 film one of steven dwarf's first film so um ultimate different steven little Dorf. creatures and and so I, I thought oh let me kind of elevate that again since um i think um well people same thing it's it doesn't have killer clowns cult status but people still like it and remember it and and kind of think about it so yeah it is good i've never seen the gate two though is that um it's not as well it's literally, it is literally shot six houses away so <laughs> uh, up in toronto uh, or north of toronto okay. uh but uh but yeah so uh and the guy i remember there was really nice and said oh come at back the gate two house. It, at the gate two house and so he, yeah, he was yeah. home um but but yeah so uh yeah not as good i think it was even the same director but um yeah i didn't quite have the creativity i think of the first one so but, was it a carbon copy kind of thing or no it kind of tried to take a next level it just didn't quite work as much but yeah. um but yeah so but the gate for sure is always kind of i'm due for watch. a rewatch of that yeah so steven dorf's a good actor as well yes leatherface uh, oh that's right <laughs> We could have a whole two hour segment on all the Texas Chainsaw Massacres. Is is <laughs> we'll get into that later too and, for a special and the various timelines. Segment. Yeah, nobody complains about all the various timelines as Texas Chainsaw Massacres, like they do the Halloweens. But yeah. I know they do. There's too many timelines. Yeah. It's like there's three, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> it's fine. I mean, there's more, but well, it's not hard to follow. Officially, yes. So. Yeah. What did you uh, have next? So uh, that is a good choice. Uh, I have, this is a one that splits people down the middle opinion wise, but the mist, I love the mist. I do. Um, there's something in the mist. It caught John Lay. It's uh, Stephen King's novella from one of his books. I want to say Skeleton Crew. I don't remember, but um, obviously I read the novel first and was very happy when this came out. And um, the ending is, the ending uh, is what kind of puts people pit them against liking or, or disliking the movie. Yeah. But um, overall, it's a, it's a fun ride. I love the cast, and I think they did a good job. Good. You hate um, the mist, don't you? 
I am not a fan of the film, but in the 80s, <laughs> Uh, and I don't know when, but I somehow I got a I had to order a tape. Uh, I was about to say online, but that it was that's not true. I had a mail order, yeah. So had uh, they the had the, the, the they had the mist. Um, I it wasn't a radio drama, but they called it the the mist in three D or something like it was. So it was a, an audio tape of, but it was really? like a radio drama. It wasn't. It was people sounds and you know acting or whatever. So. And in but the remember at the time because if you listen with headphones it did sound and things were coming from different areas and and so forth so it worked so I would I highly recommend uh, the mist uh, uh, I, 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 I don't know if it's called radio drama but I do like the mist that's exciting we, yeah so if you can find that I haven't listened to it and it's probably on YouTube or something too but uh, we shall see oh did you find it oh yeah so I think yeah so that's what yeah that was it. Wow. Look this at how we had cassette. <laughs> well, to 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 yeah. have the um I prefer the mist book uh yeah. ver versus the movie. As yeah. I do with most of most books that I love, I prefer the book better. But this one especially, the ending is just so much more ambiguous in the book. And I feel like yeah. this, if it's a true faithful adaptation of the book, I'd probably like it a lot. So I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna get this. Yeah, so check it out. Oh, it says 1986. So yep, so that sounds right. Oh, perfect! And you ordered this, and back. I in the day. remember, yeah. This what I said. I remember somehow I, I got a a copy of it. So, sixteen year old Robbie listening to I, I was right. That was my big Stephen King time. Where oh, you were really well. That yeah. was a peak season for him. He was like spitting well, him was, out left and right. And you could like literally read all of Stephen King's his whole <laughs> the whole thing. Oh, uh, the whole yeah, all of his books. Uh, before uh -huh. yeah, but uh. But yeah, so, um, and it's before they kind of went truly nuts with kind of all the, the movies, but, uh, oh, yeah. but yeah, so, uh, yeah, I recommend, I have not, uh, listened to it in a while, but, um, I remember listening to it quite a few, quite a, quite a while. That's exciting. You still as have a, it, obviously. As a teenager, I, I think I still have the cassette. I have oh, no yeah. way to play that cassette, <laughs> 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 but, uh, I still have it somewhere. So, oh, that's so cool. Um, yeah. and finally, uh, we both picked, the fly. I assume we both picked the 1986 The Fly. Of course. Be I have seen the other ones. I've seen the sequels and I've seen the yeah. Vincent Price one. But 1986 The Fly is next level. Um, Steven Soderbergh did... Uh, it. It's such a good movie. Quotable. You did a good page on that. And it's just the right... It's so much gore and it's... I love Gina Davis and that. Goldblum. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, I remember Yeah, opening night... Um, oh, I'm so jealous. Well, it was just that theme. I mean, the soundtrack truly adds to this. I mean, it just it made it a big gothic movie, and I wasn't expecting it because it kind of starts off silent and then it kind of has this kind of yeah. bombastic score. And I was like, oh, we're in for a serious big, big movie uh, here. So big time. Yep. Um, um, and you saw this opening weekend, opening night, opening night. Oh yeah. I would always go to kind of opening night. So, Man. so this was probably the same month as, uh, aliens maybe, uh, wow. Or maybe the month later. So, but it, it, 86 was a, I mean, a good summer. I remember Charles Edward Pogue wrote this and psycho three, which both came out in 86. Um, but I just remember Damn. he was busy. Uh, yeah. Aliens, Jason Lives, The Fly, like all these. Yeah, it, oh, it, it, it was yeah, your dream summer. What a summer. time to yeah. see them. Was <laughs> that, it would uh, be Matthew's dream summer. It really movies. would be. <laughs> I mean, if I could pick a time to go back, forget stopping World War II. It's that. That's what I'm doing. It, it was it was the uh, was Jason Lives a summer release as well? Yep. Was that the yep. August one? It, it was uh, some, some, all summer movies, yeah. Oh, it's amazing. That's so cool. Um, but The Fly top, is great. Top Gun. Came oh, that the fly top gun <laughs> was uh stand, stand by me thinking of uh, that came out that i came was just out gonna that ask summer. you what stephen king movie because i knew there was one there it was stand by me right yeah and uh texas chainsaw massacre 2 came out that summer so oh, it was yeah it was a that's, a that's a great summer i was gonna say it was a one crazy summer which i think also came out that which summer, also so. came out in 86 yeah, but... it's perfect uh and so that's our list those are uh October Halloween picks creature feature. Check them out uh, if you haven't seen them. That was a good list, though. Um, fly is always a good, good way to cap it off. There, you can't go wrong the with the fly. I really wish I would have seen the. Um, uh, they did the uh, 
the Fly Opera, uh, which Oh, I know. yeah. How was And that? I think I never saw it. And I was just like, I wonder if somebody taped it somewhere. They might have, but um, It's got to be around somewhere. yeah. And so I'm curious because Howard Shore did the soundtrack and he also did the Yeah. music for the Fly Opera. So I was just like, I'm Oh, sure cool. it's hopefully as, but I was just like, and maybe, you know, at some point that'll be resuscitated, you know? Like carry the musical was resuscitated, Oh, and, yeah. and They so should do that. yeah, let's 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 throw that out there in the universe. Let's Yeah. bring it back um, It and should see. be out. It, they Yeah, should do that. Yeah, uh, Howard Short, too, is like in my top five, probably. Like him, John Williams, John Debney, they're Hans Zimmer. He's like in that realm for me. He's had, he does some great work. absolutely. Probably the So. Aviator is your favorite. Of course, it's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> How would I? How could I deny that? How can I deny Uh, them? but yeah.